Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron here with the famous cotton patch version of the Gospels. Yes, Clarence Jordan, he was the founder of Koinonia Farms, which is not far from Sister Walder and I down here in Leesburg, Georgia. That's in America's Plains, Georgia. Um, some people call it a communist farm and all of this. We've been there. They sell meat and, and you know, fresh organic meat and all this kind of stuff. So we're going to read some out of the cotton patch version. This is of the cotton patch version of Paul's epistles. Excuse me. They do have the cotton patch gospel and all this. Um, this is put out by the Religious Bush Book Club. So who is Clarence Jordan? He received a, a BS in agriculture from the University of Georgia, UGA, woof, woof, woof. His THM and PhD in New Testament Greek from Southern Baptist Theological Seminary, I'm assuming in Louisville. And uh, he's widely known in church circles as a dramatic and compelling speaker at conventions and conferences. He is uh, famed for having founded Koinonia Farm in America's Georgia, pioneering interracial farming community in the heart of the Deep South. And uh, so to sustain this colony, he and his dedicated followers have braved violence, threats of violence, and legal and economic reprisals. So let's see what it says. We're here in 1 Corinthians, and it calls it First Atlanta. First Atlanta. And so this is 8-1, uh, 8-1 of 1st uh, Atlanta, a.k.a. 1st Corinthians. Now about working on Sunday, we know that we all have been enlightened, but enlightenment is inflating, while love makes a man truly great. If someone thinks he knows it all, he hasn't began to learn the first lesson. Boy, I agree with that 100%. Knowledge buffeth up. That's what it's saying. Yet if one really loves God, God then opens himself up to him. So back to this working on Sunday. We know that a day means nothing whatsoever and that God alone really matters. Even though there are many special days on both Catholic and Protestant calendars, such as those to saints and special events. So he brings it. It's not faithful to the Greek at all. He's bringing just modern things. Um, Still for us, God alone is supreme, our Father, the source of all things. We are His, and so is the Lord Jesus Christ, through whom are all things, including ourselves. But not everyone has this insight. Some people, because of their traditional background, still think working on Sunday is sinful. And uh, so, I guess he was against the blue laws down here in the South. Let's see what he says about 1 Corinthians 11. 1 Atlanta. Um... On the other hand, a woman who prays or preaches without obscuring her head or husband is a shame and disgrace to him. It is the same as though she herself were a man. Now, if a woman isn't going to act like a lady, then let her get a man's haircut. But if she is ashamed to get clipped and shaved like a man, then she should act like a lady. Indeed, since a man bears the image and honor of God, he should not, like a woman whose honor comes to her husband, veil his face. Well, that's interesting. That's why a woman needs someone to exercise authority over her, the same as other angels. But really, in the Christian fellowship, a woman is no different from a man, and a man is no different from a woman. For even though the woman was formed from the man, so the woman who gives birth to a man, God's the creator of both. Is it proper for a woman to pray to God while vainly exposing her face? Doesn't nature herself teach you that it's a disgrace for a man to let his hair grow while a woman, while for a woman long hair is attractive? And beside, it makes a very convenient veil. Now, if anyone wants to argue this point, let me simply say that this is standard policy throughout the churches. <sighs> Interesting. So a lot of people just really like this translation. You'd be amazed. Like Washington is Romans. So you've got Atlanta is uh, 1 Corinthians, Washington. Like this. Okay. So um, let's wallow in sin. This is Romans 6. So more grace may be poor forth. Ooh, and then he cusses, and I'm not going to say it. How can we who died in sin still live in it? Or are you unaware that we who are initiated into Christ Jesus' fellowship are initiated into his death realm? Therefore, through our initiation into the death realm, we are entombed with him in order that as Christ was raised from the dead by the Father's glory, we too might walk in the newness of life. And it's talking about baptism in Jesus' name. Well, 
there you have it. You know, you may have heard of it over the years. Again, years ago, it was very popular. You might see this used. You might see it used bookstores. A little bit about it, a little bit who Clarence Jordan is. Talk with you later in Jesus' name. We're just all things Bible here. Talk with you in Jesus' name.